Week 7, Problem 5. A proton having an initial velocity of 16 megameters per second enters a uniform magnetic field of 0.2 teslas with a direction perpendicular to the proton's velocity. It leaves the field filled region with a velocity of negative 16 j, again megameters per second. Okay, which went in the, over the last problem, even though it's close to the speed of light, I don't think it's enough to really affect the problem all that much. All right, so the idea here is I'm gonna draw myself a little picture. By myself, I mean us as a team. Go team. Teamwork, it makes the dream work. All right, so. Oh, oh my gosh, that is so bad. All right. Oh, there we go. All right, so this is going to be the magnetic field region. Change the color here. Let's give ourselves some, um, I don't even know what color that is. It looks nice though. I'm gonna call this R. I'm gonna call this the field. So it's the acceleration is gonna be down. So it's gonna be V cross B. So move over here, V cross B. So the, uh, to get the acceleration going down, coming into the field, so right here, we're gonna have acceleration going down. I'm gonna call this the I direction. I'm gonna call this the J direction. So usually when I say I, J, K, I just associate with X, Y, Z. I, J, K in our order, I, J, K are in order, and X, Y, Z are, are in order, so I just associate them that way. So, V cross B. So here, I gotta say the magnetic field is outward. And then when we're coming down, it'll be V cross V cross B. And then the acceleration here would be to the left, which makes sense, okay. Which gives us kind of a circle type thing. That's a travel acceleration. Oh, there we go. All right. And we know that this guy is 0.2 Teslas, direction perpendicular, and it's going to the right and negative. Okay, determine the direction of the magnetic, oh, heck, heck yeah, solved the first problem, didn't even realize it. Bam, go team. Fill that guy in real well. There we go, oh yeah. All right. Determine the radius of curvature of the proton's path while on the field. Okay, so I'm just gonna start writing stuff up and see where it goes. So let's see here. We have uh, force equals mass times acceleration. We know we're gonna have a curvature, so we're probably gonna be talking about um, centripetal acceleration. So I'm gonna throw some of that in there too. So we're gonna have some V squared over R. And then we know that we also have, we don't have electric fields, so I'm going to ignore that part. But we are going to have some QV cross B. Oh. Oh. I, mean, I guess I should probably put a little vector in here. I'm not going to. Don't care that much. All right, and you, get the, you get the idea. I could probably leave off these vectors. Mm. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this guy, make kind of a squiggly, so it's not actually equals, but kind of sort of related. You know that uh, velocity and magnetic field are perpendicular, so it's just going to be QVB. And these are all velocities, specifically, not voltages. And the two guys that we're really going to care about here, ooh, that turquoise, so pretty. And this guy and that guy. So it's asking us for the radius of curvature, the big R that I made there. All right. Yeah, we can do this. So I'm going to say that, hmm, perfect, R equals, move the R up here, move the, so we have M V squared over Q V B, oh, oh. one of the V's cancel out, well, I guess two of the V's cancel out, but you know what I mean over QB, yeah, there we go. Call that sufficiently competent. 
which equals, all right. Now I just need to know the mass of the proton. I said proton, right? Proton. So, bam, proton. I think it's like 1.67 times 10 to the negative 28, 27. 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27. Okay, then we're going to have the velocity, which we had is crazy fast. But to quantify that a little bit more, we'll call it 16. So we have 16 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. And then we have the charge, which is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 18th. 19th. You gotta learn these by now. That's okay. Don't learn them. Don't need to know it. Not important in life. Every time you learn something, it pushes something else out of your, out of your head. To paraphrase, to paraphrase Homer Simpson, just like that time I learned how to drink cognac, I forgot how to drive. Mm, I do love cognac. 0 0.2 Teslas. All right. So now we start simplifying and go from there. So, go to that dot. 27 plus, or negative 27 plus 6 is negative 21. Negative 19 and negative 21 is negative 2. Negative 2 on the top is the same as 100 on the bottom. 100 times 0.2 is 20. All right, 1.67 is pretty much the same as 1.6. And 16 divided by 20, well that's obviously 4 fifths, so I'm going to call this 0 0.8. <laughs> oh man, that was terrible, terrible, but I'm still going to go with it. I'm going to say that this is 0 0.8 meters. Uh, you guys are probably thinking if I've just recently discovered cognac and forgot how to do math. <laughs> Really, I have been drinking and I forgot how to use a calculator, so now I just have to wing it. All right, determine the distance the proton traveled in the field. Okay, so what happens here is this had a constant acceleration um, inward in a circle way. And a, this is a uh, quarter circle. So we know what the radius is because we just discovered what the radius is. And we know what a circle is, so I'm going to do the circumference of a circle over 4 equals 2 pi r, which is the circumference of a um, circle over 4, which equals, let's see, we had what, 0.8 meters? 0.8 meters. So, oh man, I'm so going to abuse this. 2, so we have pi times. Yeah, I can go to that. Times 0.8 over 2, which equals pi times 0.4 times 0.4. I should probably actually look that one up. I'm going to say it's like 12 something. Pi times 0.4. 1.25, 1.26. Yeah, that's what I meant. See, good thing I use a calculator. Oh, actually, that's even going to be answer. 1.26. I don't know why I'm being so specific on this answer, and yeah, I've been so inadequate on all the others. Oh, oh. There we go. 1.26. Quarter of a circle. 1.26. Now, there we go. Oh, there we go. Determine the time interval for which the proton is in the field. Okay, so this is just going to be, um, we know that velocity equals distance divided by time because my car, when it travels, its speed is in miles per hour. Dimensional analysis. Make a little arrow. So that means time equals distance divided by velocity, 
speed, really at speed, which is 1.26 meters. 1.26 meters. And I remember that we have 16 times 10 to the sixth um, meters per second, which is, so I'm going to do 1.26, 1.26 divided by quantity 16 times 10 to the sixth. That's probably close enough. And we get 7.875 times 10 to the negative 8th. Um, and when we convert that, multiply by 10 to the 9th, we're going to get 78.75 nanoseconds. So I'm going to call that 79. You need a certain level of accuracy with this. Be more accurate than I am, of course, because unlike uh, the program you're using online I don't get points off for being terribly inaccurate I can paint with a broad brush so 78.75 nanoseconds alright so the key concept here is force equals ma you have centripetal acceleration which is v squared over r and you know that force due to a magnetic field is Q V cross B. I think this is called a cyclotron. And since the V and B are perpendicular, the cross product is, at least the magnitude of the cross product is VB. So I can go cyclotron. So this is the idea of a cyclotron, which spinning charged particles. So if you want to read that in your free time, yeah, you can if you want some point. That will help make this feel more real to you, possibly. I don't know. All right, problem six.